Three days after having to grind to get on the field on Sunday, C.J. Stroud limited in practice, but his head coach, D'Amico Ryans, insists that he's 100%. Should we believe him? Plus, we'll hear from the man himself, C.J. Stroud, in the locker room. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey. CJ yeah, Stroud room. limited in practice on Wednesday. This is three days after he had to get to the stadium early in order to be able to play with an injured shoulder. Should we be concerned? Do we believe what D'Amico Ryans is saying? And what does CJ Stroud have to say for himself? It is the locker room number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 on Sports Radio 610. Let's hear what D'Amico Ryans had to say about the status. Uh, of his quarterback after he was limited in practice on Wednesday. Yeah, and him, it's, it's all about the protection. It's, we've had good protection at times, and it's not only just our offense line. It's the backs, it's the tight ends, it's the quarterback, it's the receivers. Protection involves all 11. So with that being said, we just have to make smart decisions with the football. We have to block the guys in front of us, make sure we're giving our quarterback time in the pocket. You know, we don't want to see our quarterback get hit, but we can make smart decisions all across the board with all 11 guys. Yeah, for CJ at practice, everything was normal at practice today. He threw the ball well, no issues with his shoulder. No issues. That's that's interesting. I mean, no issues. Okay. I, I don't – look, sometimes you get – uh, a sprain and then you work it out you throw it sometimes it actually helps it better but when, when you're telling me a guy gets to the game hours early he's getting hit uh and he's throwing the ball okay no issues i i hope that is right but i do think we need to keep an eye on it he was limited today uh we'll see how it is to uh he was limited yesterday we'll see how that goes today and tomorrow the other thing D'Amico mentioned smart decisions um and ways to protect cj stroud and I agree with him. Yeah, it can start up front. It can start with the backs. It can start with the tight ends, et cetera. It can also start with not spiking the ball with one second left and having him get drugged to the floor uh, on, on his shoulder by DeForest Buckner in an 11-point game with one second left. So, it, it, yeah, you need to be smarter as a, as a team. You need to be smarter uh, and better at protecting him. But that, that moronic display that they put on, um, final two plays of the game in which – they're down 11 points and they spike the ball with one second. And then CJ rolls out and gets thrown on his shoulder by DeForest Buckner. Let, let's be smarter there too. Hopefully they had some sort of conversation about that. Uh, and hopefully Bobby Slowick gets asked about that today. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a text in and see if that can get asked because I thought that was unacceptable. Let's hear from the man himself. Here is CJ Stroud. So far, so good. Two weeks in. Uh, you can make a case he's been the best rookie quarterback. Some people might want to make a case for Anthony Richardson. I would say, you know, he's been out of games three times. He's missed a few quarters. Uh, if we were just given the two-week report card, I think you might have to go with C.J. Stroud. What does that mean? Don't know. Uh, RG3 was better than Andrew Luck in week one. Uh, Trevor Lawrence had a crappy rookie season. I, I don't want to – just the two-week report card so far so good. And at the podium. There aren't very many better. Let's hear from C.J. Stroud in the locker room. I feel blessed. Uh, I feel good. Like um, sitting here in front of y'all, man. I'm, I'm blessed, man. I, I don't, uh, football is a physical sport, physical sport, and uh, that's what I signed up for. But my body's fine. I'm all right. Like well, after week one, you kind of get used to just getting hit and like the rehab that goes into. The, that Monday, Tuesday, getting your body back for Wednesday and, and so forth so you can practice well. Um, so that's really what I've been doing. But, yeah, I feel good. In 2021, you had something similar kind of pop up early in the season at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. How much did that help you handle what you dealt with last week? Yeah, it helped a lot. Um, I remember my injury from week one. Uh, and when I, when we this is good stuff by Stutes asking him about this. Uh, injuring his shoulder at Ohio State his freshman year. 
Played Minnesota my freshman year, uh, uh, rest year freshman year at Ohio State. Had an AC joint sprain and then played week two with that. And just I did a lot of the same things I kind of did uh, for this injury that I had now. Um, uh, just to get back feeling right and just my adrenaline. When you're playing, your adrenaline usually takes away the pain. So um, that helped a lot. Uh, but after the game, I felt it a little bit. And But as I've gotten back with Roland and, and uh, my guy Kuku, um, they've helped me a lot get back ready. So I feel I feel almost 100%. CJ, when you saw Laramie on the field today and in the huddle with you, how much uh, was that a boost for you guys, the whole offense? Yeah, Laramie's a big part of his offense, not only just by his play, but just his presence of a leader, his presence of um, somebody who has a really, good, really, really good experience. Um, he's been in the league a long time, and he's done it at a high level for a long time. So it's just another comfort uh, factor for not only myself, but for the, our whole offense and our team. So it was really, really good to, um, to have him out there, man. Uh, that's my guy, man. We're locker room mates and we talk all the time. And uh, I, was, I missed him out there on Sunday, um, but I'm glad he's back. and. Uh, Hoping that he does his thing because I know he will. By the way, D'Amico said it was a knee, not knees. He he mistakenly said knees the other day. Uh, Laramie Tunsil, a knee. Your touchdown to Nico was the first touchdown from a Buckeye to a Wolverine since '99 in the NFL. What was that like? Can you guys talk about that? It's an interesting stat. No, not really. CJ, on Sunday, you said. Yeah, and into that Michigan Ohio State thing. Yeah, um, that's a great question, man. Um, I think I was my it was probably my sophomore, my freshman sophomore year at Ohio State, and um, I always felt like I always had like a, a kind of like a, a mind, like a killer mindset. Like whenever I'm on the field or whenever I'm watching film, like whenever I'm doing anything. And I remember my my uh, assistant quarterbacks coach at Ohio State put me to the side, and he asked me, he was like, "What does it mean to play quarterback?" Like what is like what what what's like your job? And I'm like to make plays. Like, I don't know. Like you know what I'm saying. Like and I said to be a leader. He was like, yeah, it's right. Like being a leader, making plays, all that stuff is great. But he was like, your, your main job is to make people around you better, like on the field and off. And I took that to heart. And ever since that moment, like I dedicated a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of uh, like mental capacity, a lot of energy to that cause. And I told myself I would never go back, and I would never regret not doing everything. So like every game, every opportunity I have, I try to do everything I can and flip over every stone just to make sure that I won't let anybody down. And um, it, I know people are dependent on me. And I remember even talking to uh, Brady this, um, I talked to Tom Brady. We had like a, a lunch with Michael Rubin um, over the summer. And I remember the one thing that kind of stuck out to me that he was talking about, I mean, like, this Tom Brady has seven rings. Like, you would think that's all he would talk about. Like, me, me, me. But the only thing he was really talking about how much he loved his teammates and he didn't want to let them down. And, like, for me, that's, like, really big because I know not only his tank depending on me, but I know his mom is. I know his, his brothers and sisters and his family. I know Damn. Um, Sting, his parents are dependent on, on us winning. Uh, I know uh, Malik. Uh, like JG, like these people, not only them as people are dependent on me, but their families are. And just like I'm dependent on them and my family's dependent on them. Like I really think like of football that deep. Um, so that's why I kind of say pressure, pressure, pressure is a privilege because um, at the end of the day we wake up and we get to play this lovely game. And I think it's cool, like don't get me wrong, like it's it means a lot, but it's not everything. And we're, real, we're real people outside of this building and we go through real things. and. A lot of people don't have the opportunity to kind of get away from those problems and, and lock in on a sport that they play since they were children. So uh, that's why I mean pressure is a privilege because the pressure that is applied and, and it, this job comes with is a privilege because uh, not many people get to do it and it's a blessing at the end of the day. How do you balance the, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was going to say, how do you balance your sense of urgency with patience? You talked after the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you balance those feelings as a leader? It's a great question. Really good question. Um, as a leader, I think something as a quarterback is just staying cool, calm, and collected. 
Like I might, I maybe be mad at myself, like like super mad at myself. I missed a throw, or missed a play, missed a read, missed a check. Um, but if I blow up, the whole team's gonna blow up. And I think that's a, a thing as a quarterback. You got to be able to kind of have a sense of urgency, but still have a sense of reality and understand that, like, when and, I, and of course me, a man of God, like trying to be as best as I can with my faith. And um, I think, uh, like, even in this uh, society, like social media. And like, like technology has made everything rushed. Like kids are rushing to be adults. Adults are rushing to be grandparents, like like or parents or like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like this world, everything is being rushed. And for me, I, like I have a sense of like urgency, but I, I try to basically let God handle the uncontrollables and I can only control what I can control. You know what I mean? I can only do what I can do and let everything uh, figure out its own. Um, but everything that I can touch and I can do on my own, I try to really ace and, and do that as best to my ability. I would say on social media, though, there's a lot of grandparents trying to be kids, too. So um, it's tough, like, sometimes having to kind of like, okay, CJ, calm down. Like, at the end of the day, like, we're going to get this. Like, you can't, like, get super mad at yourself and let the next play f uh, affect the next. Um, but at the same time, it is a sense of urgency, like you said. So. For sure, yeah. Um, I, I've been saying this since I've been like 12. Like, it's in me, not on me. Like, God put something special in me that I can't really like explain. Um, I think just like a lot of things I've been through, um, from a kid to college um, to now as an adult. Um, I think like, and everybody in this room has been through their own issues and problems, and even the locker room. And those made y'all who, why y'all sitting in y'all seats now? You know what I mean? The same thing for me. It's like God preparing me for like uh, moments of not only um, the distress and like uh, I, would, I wouldn't say negativity, but like things that aren't necessarily always positive uh, from the from the outside look, the world look. Um, prepare for those moments, and he prepared me for success. Like if you get everything that you want right then and there, like if I would have got offers in eighth grade, I probably wouldn't be sitting right here right now. You know what I mean? Like that was my goal. That's what I wanted. But like God knew I wasn't ready yet, so He prepared me in other ways to get me ready. And same thing for anybody else doing a thing, doing something that they love. So um, that's kind of how I manage that: is just knowing that everything happens for a reason, and uh, God has a purpose and a plan, and He prepared me for the pressure that He put on me. Uh, and that's why I kind of say it's a privilege. So. Yes, it was big, man. Um, Baltimore is loud. It's a great stadium. It's a great environment. Um, that defense flew around. Two really, two really good linebackers and great team. And we'll get the same type of challenge this week. Jacksonville is a, a great place to play, as, I, as I've been told. It's loud. Um, and we got to be on our A game, in the huddle, out the huddle, getting to the ball, getting set. I got to be right with, with, um, with everything I have to do on my table. And, um, and get guys uh, ready to win. Um, and I think that um, we, we've took steps every week, and now it's, it's time to put it together. So um, just execute, man. We got to execute early on um, and just get our rhythm and roll. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to do that, and I'm really, uh, I'm really excited for this challenge again to go on the road, play against a really, really, really good defense in Jacksonville, really good team, well coached. Um, and I definitely think it's a good challenge for our team. Go, going from Baltimore to Jacksonville, I will say, like early on, that's like going from a – five-star steakhouse to a uh to a jack-in-the-box so I, I i think that i i think the atmosphere the, the jacksonville atmosphere nothing you really need to worry about um first and foremost their d-line um uh, 44 and 41 great players set the edge um run around play well their d-line really stout really big um, and their linebackers, 23, 33, I actually played against. This is random, but could you imagine if the Texans and anyone else had to go face, and, and, and I know he mentioned Trevon Austin there, um, Trevon Walker, excuse me. Could you imagine if they had to go face Josh Allen and Aiden Hutchinson? My God, that would be a hell of a lot scarier. Uh, Devin, in uh, college, 
um, two really good players, not only in, in run run in the run game, but also in pass coverage. Uh, 32 Campbell, he's a really good DB. Um, Cisco, somebody I know personally, um, he's a good dude, uh, very aggressive, very uh, good in coverage, but also is, is um, constantly making good tackles. Uh, same thing with two. And then 37 comes in, plays a nickel, plays really well. 31 is a solid corner. Um, so he um, knows the team. I don't. I don't want to name out the names he? too. But <laughs> he's in that film <laughs> sorry, room too. But, uh, nah, great defense right? all over, uh, all the way around, and some uh, they played really well together all uh, last year. I think they brought really everybody back. So um, definitely got to be on our A game and know where they're at and and, and try to um, execute as best we can. So and they're studying. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Trevor's a great player. I, I respect him a lot. Uh, we played against him in college um, that, uh, for the Sugar Bowl in 2021. Uh, somebody I really respect. Actually, it was 2020. Uh, somebody I really respect um, and appreciate his game and love his game. Man. He's a really, really, really good player. Um, but my path is my path. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't try to mimic what he And it's not at all similar either. Like, that doesn't, like, Trevor Lawrence at this point had Urban Meyer. It was an absolute disaster. It was a dumpster fire. So yeah, it's not even. It's not. Andy was like the most heralded guy from beginning to end. So the the paths aren't similar at all. He does, but I see he set out kind of a blueprint on just working hard and just and keep chopping wood. Like he maybe didn't start off hot uh, his rookie year. Who played well, played really well, but they weren't winning and just kept chopping wood, kept chopping wood, kept at kept adding pieces to the team and just kept chopping wood, kept showing up every day. And I think it's starting to pay off for him. So happy for him. But, you know, this, this is my life, my path. I got to do it the way that God asks and the Texans need. So, yeah. Well, last, the last couple of y'all, Cam, Nick, Cody, CJ, each week you talk about getting better. Um, and coaches say how you never make the same mistakes twice. They see the growth. Like, what's your take on that? Like, what is it that you'd like to see? What's your thing maybe that you're focusing on other than just the win for this week? Um, I know you said not to win, but for me, it's the win. Money quote. Like, it's it's cool to play good, but like if you don't win, it really don't matter. So, um, and for me, like I, I had plays where I feel like we didn't win because of me. Um, so uh, I gotta be better. You know what I mean? And um, I gotta look myself in the mirror and not point fingers. And and that's something I would never do. Um, but uh, for me, like I gotta leave my guys better. I gotta do everything better so we can win. And that's all that matters. Like. Uh, so that's probably my biggest focus is, is doing all those little things right. So those things, little things add up for us to become victorious and um, things like that. So, yeah. What, what, does the, what can the passing attack do to help the rushing attack kind of get going? Uh, I mean, I feel like they kind of uh, go off each other. The running game works for the passing game. The passing game works for the running game. So um, in our offense, we want to execute everything at a high level. It's not just one one specific uh, area. Uh, if you want to be a great offense and put up good numbers, you have to do everything well. So that's our that's our plan, man. We ain't trying to uh, do too much on either way. We want to be balanced and, and make sure that um, we're, we're executing at a high level in every single way we can. All right. Thank, you. Right. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. All right, there you go. That's CJ Stroud. How about that? Now, early, it's early in the process. There's there's a lot of stuff, and he's dependent on Bobby Slowick's development. He's dependent on the offensive line, et cetera, and, and it is early in the process. But I will say this. When it comes to the podium, I, I don't think you get worse at that. I think you only get better. And, and at the podium, which is something that I put probably too much stock in, solid B-plus right there uh, from C.J. Scott, just because I don't want to set the bar too high because I think he can get better. Uh, subscribe, like. Right along, it is the locker room. Still a little concerned about that shoulder. D'Amico Ryan says not to be. I don't listen to coaches when it comes to injuries, and you probably shouldn't either. Uh, no matter what happens, whether his shoulder's good, whether it's bad, whether he improves, whether he gets worse, no matter what, when it comes to this Texan stuff, we're all in this together. Thanks for coming through the locker room. Talk to you tonight on the live stream. Every angle's what we really do. We the source, we the post of the city Let's too. Landlock, got the game in the headlock. Localize every time, can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, we top two and we not two. Plugged in daily digital. On